Hey everybody, this is Dylan. And this is Fortune, also known as A Restless Mind on YouTube. And welcome to episode 12 of Cinescussion, and we are talking about the world of competitive gaming, which we know a little bit about. Yes, yes, <laughs> I love competitive gaming. Uh, I have to be honest, like com- esports for me is like uh, like most like adults uh, sports, like if there's a huge Halo tournament or you know, Apex or something that I want to watch, you know, back in the day, StarCraft, like, it's like when a football comes on and you're like, okay, I love you guys, but don't bother me. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep, yep. I, uh, so I've been into competitive fighting games for a very long time. Um, since, actually, I think when I really got into it around 2009 with the release of a game called Street Fighter IV, which um, it was actually a term for people like me who really got into the competitive scene around that time within the fighting game scene. We're called O Niners because, uh-huh. and that was also I, MK9, wasn't that MK9 as well? Shortly after, yeah, shortly yeah. after, um, which was so, me. Yeah, fighting games um, as a genre, at least within mainstream media, had been really dying down for for quite a long time after the release of uh, Third Strike and Marvel vs. Capcom. Two years later, it was just kind of a dry spell. Um, they existed for sure, but there wasn't any excitement around it. But then came the online era and the Xbox 360, and eventually the release of a new Street Fighter game, which is Street Fighter 4, and you can play with yeah. people across the world. And, and you know, that necro would never be serviceable today, but back then, <laughs> being able to do that was incredible. And I remember that I remember at the time graphically that was like amazing too. Like the, it was really cool. It's like it's a 2D mm-hmm. plane, but it's 3D graphics with cartoon textures or whatever. Like really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, really cool stuff. They called it 2.5D. Um, Is that what they called it? That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that's yeah. what they called it. And, uh, you know, funny thing about these Street Fighter games is similar, you know, uh, years and years later, Street Fighter Five eventually came out. But it always seems to be the most influential game within the space. It's like a new Street Fighter launches and kind of sets the tone for kind of what fighting games are going to look like for the next five to ten years. It's like, this is essentially how meter is going to be like, and this is kind of how it's going to be based on if it's going to be grounded or if it's going to be crazy and jumpy and air mobility and all this stuff. For um, sure, yeah. Like, like uh, the first fighting game I got into competitively was Mortal Kombat 9, and that was, like you said, shortly later. But if you think about it, you're absolutely right, because that's a 2D, it's the 2D space again, but it's 3D graphics and there's a meter system and like yeah for sure you're absolutely right did we meet on mk9 yeah that, that you're was ga- it back yeah your, your your gamer tag was back to back country you avenge sevenfold fan you that was a great album though so i can't like say anything negative so, about it no i uh, i will own my edgy teenage years uh with my uh my avenge sevenfold my slipknot my chemical romance I always had banging with the best of them, long hair and everything. <laughs> oh, I remember. I remember with the beanie. You had the beanie. Always. The, <laughs> yeah. Always beanie boots. with the curls hanging out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Everybody, I remember. Are you in a band? No, I'm lazy. <laughs> 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 Yo, this is called the Nirvana, bro. <laughs> like, what are you exactly. talking about? Exactly. Don't be ridiculous. I'm edgy. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I've always been boring. I've just been vastly. Well, that's not completely true, but I'll get into that later. But yeah. We're well, not boring, but what does vastly mean? Uh, originally it was just, originally it was just going to be vastly underrated. Like, um, and then, and then I realized very quickly that people will always just shorten your name and I wanted to, so I just went with vastly and I realized there weren't a lot of people at the time, any competitive gamers that their name started with V really. And I kind of liked, and I kind of just wanted to, and vastly underrated was there. And I was like, that's just too long. So I shortened it. My original name, um, okay. So this is crazy. My mom was very religious growing up. I never really was, but I grew up in the church. Right. So to please her, when we first got a P we got a PC, uh, single mom. So we didn't have a lot of money, but she got a very good deal on a cheap PC at a, uh, <laughs> at a, uh, I think it was a chain called comp USA. Um, but they went out of business. So she got a PC and, um, it's, it's years later, so it's fine. They're gone. Uh, well, one of the ways she made the deal is the guy really wanted to make a sale, and she didn't have a lot of money, and she knew I was a gamer. So she said, hey, I'll buy this computer if you could hook me up with a couple of games for my son, right? And this was like 1990. I guess it would have been nine or eight, somewhere around there. And um, he was like, I, I can't do that, but here's what I can do. He goes, I actually have two of the newest games. At the time, it was StarCraft and Alien vs. Predator by Rebellion, which is still one of my favorite uh, shooters ever. Like, on PC, it was fantastic. Um, And what he did was 
he sold the computer and then he burnt us the copies and then sent us the CD keys and then just trashed his games at home. Uh... <laughs> so I got these two burnt copies and I had never played a top-down strategy game. So the first time I touched StarCraft, admittedly, I was like, oh, huh, this is cool, but I lost interest quickly. I was like, I don't think I'm going to like this. So I played Alien vs. Predator for a while. And if you think about it, um, that actually, now that I think about it, I wasn't going to talk about that, but that was actually my first foray into competitive gaming. I, I don't yeah, even know yeah. that because because you could be the alien predator or marine. Uh, very few people picked the alien because the alien was wicked fast, could crawl over the walls, but they had really they really low health. But if you could time a head bite correctly, which is where you had to put them literally, it had to be perfect by the pixel in the center of the screen. Mm -hmm. These jaws would appear, and if you did that, you get a head bite, and it, it's an instant kill on a predator or a, or and predators had more health, but it's like almost impossible to get, you know, because they're moving around. Right. I got so good that I got it at least half the time. Like it was crazy. Like. Um, yeah. so my clan, I was like the only alien player if they wanted an alien, but I was also a really good pred mm -hmm. and it, <laughs> I don't remember what it stands for, but I remember the com I was, the clan I was a part of was com C O M. And then I went by the name Reaper originally. And then my tag was BGM. I don't remember what BGM stood for, but it was basically like, um, I was the right hand man to the head. And uh, that I think that was the origin of my identity on games when there's clans. I don't like being the leader. I like essentially, if you've seen the raid, I like being the mad dog that you let off the right. leash. Like, like, like that. That's yeah. what I like. And I think it started from that because that's what I felt like. He was like, "Oh, he'll pick alien," and the clans are like, "Then you're gonna get wrecked." And they're like, "You haven't played against Reaper's alien." <laughs> and the next, you know, I had teams like terrified. Like it was so funny when they'd actually hug into the corner because they're scared. And I got so good that you could taunt by doing the alien hiss, and it would do the sound effect from the movie. I would actually hiss before I'd kill them, and then they'd like look up, and I'd like kill them. <laughs> like, it nice. was it was great. But yeah, nice. anyway. Um, but yeah, like so that's how I got into uh that, and then it led to other things. But I'll go into that later. So. What about you? Yeah. yeah, so um I started playing Street Fighter 4. Before that, I remember playing a, a 3D fighting game called Soul Calibur 2 and a little bit of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Nice. And all of these fighting games growing up, and I remember really loving, in those games, the music, the art style, and it always felt really engaging to me, not only to be alone and, uh, you know, having a one-on-one -on -one kind of versus competition with one other person, but mm -hmm. also... Um, how quickly you had to make decisions offensively yeah. and defensively. And this is before I knew anything about uh, frame data or spacing or uh, baits or neutral, all these just yeah. different terms um, that you kind of learn over time. I just really knew that the characters were really cool. The combos looked really cool. It was difficult. And I felt like no matter how much I learned, there was always more to learn. By the way, um, you, you taught me all that when I met oh, you really? in MK9. MK9 was the first fighting game that I took seriously yeah. and you were so good. You're the one that taught me about like researching frame data and all that stuff. Like I didn't know any of that stuff. You would say stuff and it was like another language to me. I was like, yeah. you were like, you were like fuzzy guard and then like spacing. And then, and then you were like uh frame data. And then you talked about like, uh, you know, like, and I was just like, I, I have no idea. You were like wave dash. I'm like, what is that? Like, I don't even know what these things are. Like, so yeah, like you taught me all that just so you know, like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, no, I'm happy to. That's uh, another one of my passions is uh, getting people excited about fighting games. Um, I've really enjoyed them for so long and I've gotten pretty good at them. Um, for the most yeah, part, you I are. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can pick them up pretty quick and I can understand system mechanics. And I get to a point pretty quick that you kind of want to be out of the fighting game where you know most of how the characters work. And now it's really just decision making at a very quick yeah. pace. Can you make decisions faster? Than your opponent or i i like to think of it as everything is a problem you can either solve or you can put you can either give a problem to somebody or you spend the game solving problems it's either you're really proactive or you're really reactionary for sure for sure um and i play very reactionary i'm very like in chess i like to go second for example i really like to mm. follow somebody's lead and kind of make decisions based off their decisions and it's very similar in fighting games um there's less decisions to be made in a chess match you have more kind of things within a chess match that you can do but within a fighting game within the sandbox of options that you have i like to follow somebody's lead and then kind of make decisions based on that um, sure and it's just it it just becomes mind games it's can you outthink somebody quickly can you think faster than them can you um solve the problems that they provide to you faster than they can think of a new one you know what i mean 
for and sure. it's just kind of back and forth and back and forth. And then you get these big moments where you, you play against somebody who is playing as quick as you and they're putting you in situations that you don't understand. And now you for get sure. this moment where you're like, all right, I'm pissed off. But do I feel like solving this right now? Or do I need to like go do some research and come back and figure this out? You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, so that's kind of what got me into it. But I've, I've really played most things I could get my hands on over the years. Um, my biggest ones growing up were anything Capcom made. So Street Fighter, um, a lot of the Versus series. Um, so Street Fighter uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, Street Fighter... <laughs> Or Marvel vs. Capcom 2, 3, uh, the first one, X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Um, I didn't play yep. much Marvel I did. Infinite. I think you told me that uh, Capcom is your favorite um, game developer, right, in general? Yeah, yeah, they're my favorite game developer, um, especially when they're on a hot streak. Like, uh, <laughs> I remember a few years ago, like, they had done a really great update for Street Fighter Five and made it a much better game than it used to be. And then they released another game series called Monster Hunter that was wonderful. That's they a great game. That's a great series. game. Yeah, sure. Devil May yeah. Cry, which is wonderful. And when those developers and creative team are at the top of their game, they really do awesome work. Um, it's probably between them and Front Software, who create the Souls games. Um, oh, yeah. Which I like for I, a completely different reason. Me, me too. Me, me, yeah. Souls are the games I can just get lost in. Like, I could just play. I don't really feel stress, like, because I, I don't. I don't know. I don't find it stressful because it's more about just repetition and learning the patterns and everything. But it, I like it, and I think the world's interesting, and I like the building, and um, I like the atmosphere. I also like that it's challenging. I like that, like, I mean, it's not as challenging as like some of the crazy old games, but mm -hmm. it's closer to those style of games, which I miss because I feel like nowadays most developers try to hold your hand most of the way. Um, yeah, so it feels nice. like it's to get you. It does. It <laughs> really yeah. does, yeah, and it does get you very frequently. Yeah. <laughs> Regularly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I have friends uh, who've broken controllers, keyboards, uh things on that game for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but growing up where I realized I could be pretty good at it and maybe um I could, you know, really become competitive for fighting games was where we started playing together in Mortal Kombat Nine. Um I, I was good at Street Fighter Four, um, but I was really good at Mortal Kombat Nine. Um and it Quan, was just because Quan, Quan Jesus. Quan yeah, Jesus, I played Quan, Je Quan Jesus. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, you know, it's funny. I, I actually talk about that game regularly, not so much like mechanically, but just kind of the, the space I was in and compared to how I play games now. And I was good at that game because I had an unlimited amount of time to play. And that was just all mm -hmm. I wanted to do was just play that game and learn everything. So uh, generally when I talk to my friends who are still into fighting games, I'm in a completely different place now. I've never had more responsibilities. So my time is so like... <laughs> You know, if I can get an hour to two hours on a video game, I'm like, yes, outside of like big tournaments, which we'll, we'll get into later. But yeah, um, uh huh. It seems like that hour or two is, is doing work. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I'm like, okay, so if I only get an hour, like, how can I effectively spend that hour on improving at something? You know what I mean? For sure. So for sure. It's yeah. not so much like I have all the time in the world and I could just play 200 games straight anymore and like I'll learn in the moment. It's like, yeah. okay, how can I like, I just need to know if I can hit this setup or not. Like, is this realistic? I'm going to try for an hour. Yeah. That's honestly a fantastic mindset, though. But, like, yeah. the time you have is limited, so spend it actually learning something new or improving something. Like, like that's mm -hmm. a very great mindset to have, honestly. It makes it um, less frustrating to, to lose, too. Because um, losing can... <laughs> yeah. It can be frustrating, especially when you feel that you're really good at something, you know? So if I put my mind state in a in a kind of learner's mind state of, I want to attempt to do something that I don't usually do just to see if it's effective. Then like, if you lose, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Maybe it's not as good as I thought it was. Let me try something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, for sure. For yeah. sure. No, I totally get that one. Yeah, but that's kind of how I started. And it's always been, um, I know, it, you know, within the fighting game community, it's it does still seem pretty niche. The fighting game community is pretty large, but not in the way other video game communities are large you know what i mean um yeah it seems like it's getting there though like it seems like it's um what's interesting is there are certain communities that like i'm not a part of but the smash community is enormous like, like that one seems to be crazy like i mean even locally at um what's it called uh 
GameWorks or whatever down there. Like, right. like the tournaments they used to have for that are, are enormous. I mean, I mean, and, and one thing I learned about fighting games is it does seem like based on where you live, different games are more popular. Like a lot of sure. central locations and stuff, especially in Chicago and things like Mortal Kombat's really big, right? Mm -hmm. Street Fighter seems to be fairly big everywhere, probably because it's the godfather of fighting games. But like right. with a lot of the other ones, you'll go to different areas and different games are just more popular there, right? Because mm -hmm. like, and I've actually found that to be similar to games like halo for instance there are quite a few pros that have come out of like ohio um there are quite a few that have come out of washington but that also makes sense because it was developed here um yeah. you know like, like but like uh, it is interesting how that works um it's not it's like it's not always the same but then there'll be a lot of pros that'll find that they're within like a state of each other like within a four-hour drive you know like um and i think a big part about that is the best the best when they go to tournaments they you know they find each other even if they're not pros yet and they have this they have these uh, opponents that are really good and they make each other better, I think, over time is what happens. And it, and it kind of slowly yeah. builds its own community. It's like a natural thing, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you're totally right on that. I think what slows fighting games down in that aspect, though, is we... Uh, the fighting game community really prides itself in its kind of grassroots ability to, to build offline events and kind of bring people together and get them interested in person. Mm -hmm. And it's the only kind of gaming scene that i still think holds on to that identity uh really firmly everything else has made the transition to online reasonably so um i think the couple things that are different for fighting games are a net codes work very differently for fighting games input base so it's not like a shooting game um also yeah. when it comes to fighting games you are you are alone and you're testing your ability against somebody else who is also alone Mm -hmm. And having that kind of head to head in an environment where there's a crowd and you're essentially doing competitive speed math with difficult execution. You know what I mean? 100%. So seeing something really cool in the moment in person, there's nothing like it. People are popping off and, you know, hollering and all of these like really exciting things where it's not the same. Almost. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, and for it's, sure. It's so, yeah, not so like a, a shooting game where somebody like has a play and you understand like why they stayed in that corner and why they hit you from that area. And if I am somebody could do something to you and you're like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. What is going on? You gotta be yeah. next to the person. Just lean over and be like, what'd you just do? How do I deal with that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think some of the great moments in games, like you said, they do happen on land. That was one thing I appreciate about Halo 2 back in the game uh, day. Um, and this will lead into the other segment about, because um, we were talking about what competitive gaming is. And if, for those of you that don't know, competitive gaming is, it's huge now, and essentially, it's think of it like NFL, NBA. It's just called it's called esports, which stands for electronic sports. And essentially, you have um, in games that are solo play, you have sponsored players by different game organizations like fighting games, like Dylan here, who's a part of uh, STG. Um, that there are also, and then team-based games, you have sponsored uh, companies that sponsor whole teams. I mean, they pay for your hotel rooms, fly you out to tournaments, pay entry fees, and then you split, uh, like you win, there's a percentage of your contract, you split with them, you know, et cetera, like that. They also, a lot of times, maybe they'll have people that do your branding on your Twitch streams, things like that. And now things exist that I wish existed when I was 17, because like we saw this stuff coming, but God, I wish it was there when I was younger. Cause like now there are even colleges now that have scholarships like people for like NBA and football, they have esports scholarships and they're forming like pro call of duty teams or league of legends teams or maybe maybe soon halo infinite or whatever but they'll like have these leagues and you know they'll form these teams for college and you can actually get a scholarship if you're like a top level gamer like yeah. like uh, that that stuff i wish existed when i was young like, like that would have been the dream right there yeah. uh so it's really taking off and i mean it's not something where it's just people you know making a few bucks it, like it, it's it's huge money like, like to put it in perspective most games aren't even uh, like the biggest game in the world uh, prize pool wise i think for the last 10 years in a row is actually dota 2 league of legend technically league of legends technically has more players that play and it is a great game it has like i think it's like 100 i don't know 80 million people that played a month or something dota has like 15 or something which is still insanely high mm -hmm. but but dota just for its championship alone it started with like a $20 million prize pot. And then with people buying battle passes and half of that contributes to the pool by the yeah. championships this year, the bat, the battle, the, the final was $50 million. And that's just for the championships. That's the fourth of that of four majors. I think the other ones had like a $10 million prize pool. And then there's like another, I don't know, 
when it's not co- quarantine. There's like another, right. I don't know, 120 to 150 tournaments all around the world if your sponsors want to fly to them that might have anywhere from a 200 to like $600,000 prize pool. So, so like the, these guys are making millions upon millions of dollars. If you're in one of those top like, you know, six, eight teams especially, you're racking up so much money. So um, it, it's a legitimate thing. So for parents out there, depending on how good your kid is, it might actually be a legitimate lifestyle. It just depends. And then if you're really good and you're not sponsored, you could get really big on like Twitch and yeah. don't get don't get me wrong don't get me started if you get big on twitch it's even bigger than that half the time because you, you, i mean you can make crazy money but they're they're legitimate careers now and, and i think what's interesting about it is you have personalities that are really good on stream and then there's pro people that do both sometimes streamers just get really good from streaming and then get picked up by teams it's, it's, it's cool how they interconnect now and it makes sense right yeah. like there are some dota pros that are on top teams now that we knew about for years they were pub stompers but they did insane things in pubs but they weren't pros and like after i i played dota for like maybe two years like a couple years after i quit one of them got picked up and the first year he got picked up they got like third at the international or something and i was like good for you like and then and then basically there were two i think there was a guy named weeha and there was another guy named miracle i think miracle's still on one of the top teams now so like it's it's really cool how it works like and how the streaming and like just maybe youtuber world connects with actual pro gaming now because you actually have a free platform to show off what you got you know before it used Mm -hmm. to just be word of mouth and unless you won stuff on like i'm old i'm dating myself unless you won something on like game battles or something back in the day and you had like a crazy uh history of all of your wins or whatever versus top people it didn't really matter but now you actually have documented footage of you playing and people can study it and be like hey we should call this guy maybe we should pick him up or or this girl you know like and that's the other cool thing you're getting seeing a lot more female streamers and uh female pro gamers too which is cool because like for a long time it was like oh like they used to say things like oh a lot of girls don't play they just don't prefer like uh fps's and stuff like that and i'm like oh that's not true like like, like not no they're, they're proving it like one of the best uh, uh killer players in dead by daylight her name's umbra she's a huntress mm-hmm. She could throw a hatchet at you across the map. Just guess where you are. I'm down you. She's she's the coolest thing. So <laughs> like yeah, but like yeah, it's pretty cool. So um, it's cool just to see the diversity. It's cool to see just this entire industry like explode. And because I'm someone that loves to watch it the way you know people love to watch the Super Bowl, I'm so excited, especially on weekends when they have these tournaments. Like I have yeah. weekends where I'll spend the whole day because like unlike the football game, they don't have a tournament like every Friday, right? right? So they might have it once every three weeks. So it tends to be like an all day Saturday and all day Sunday thing. Mm-hmm. So for me, like a lot of the day, I'm just like chilling, vegging out. <laughs> watching the tournament don't i know it man i'm, I'm yeah. in the fighting game tournaments so i'm like this is an all-day thing <laughs> yeah for sure i know like your this tournaments when I, yeah like, like your tournaments when i watch them I'm like i watch all of your matches and i watch some other ones but i might play games and like wait for you to have your next match you know <laughs> like, it, it gets to the like... point when i'm winning and i'm like oh i want another one <laughs> <laughs> I've had people. I've had people say that they like they don't mean it because they want the money, but like it'll go on so right. long. They're like, man, I keep winning. If I lost, I could at least go home. It's so right. long. <laughs> it does yeah. feel that way. Sometimes. It's like and a long know. ass day, and your brain's just on overdrive all day long. So you're just so exhausted. Like I remember, uh, I flew over. I flew down to CPL Dallas, which was a Halo Three. It was the first Halo Three tournament when Halo came out, and MLG famously had Halo on the bag. It was their game. CPL was a computer. Uh, game league that decided to try to get some of the action they had this secret sponsorship which was like a one million dollar prize pool was the biggest in history so we flew down to dallas and it was essentially a free-for-all tournament Mm -hmm. uh i got top 32 which is still which is uh uh, i think that's still pro brackets paid i should have won five thousand dollars for that Mm -hmm. they folded after that weekend and none of us got paid yeah and then after everyone bought their tickets um it had changed to a hundred thousand dollar tournament, and people were like, "Wait, what? That you can't do that?" It turned like, like okay, so I'm gonna say this allegedly because I don't know, and I'm not gonna try to get sued or anything. Right. But I, I found out from another pro player that I used to play with at the time. He he claimed that he had heard he had heard uh-huh. that allegedly uh, right. the secret sponsor was Spearman Gum, and Major League Gaming allegedly found out. And behind the scenes, possibly snaked the sponsorship on purpose after people signed up, because then Ooh. once they won, they knew CPL couldn't pay it out, and then they killed their own their own competition overnight. That is the rumor. Like I don't know if it's true, but in that business, is, um... it's kind of brilliant. Like, like it's like you tried yeah. to go in on our you tried to go in on our turf. We were fine leaving yeah. you alone with your PC games. You tried to take Halo, and then. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, I don't know if that's true. That's just what I heard. It is a rumor. But when I heard it, I couldn't help smiling because I was like, damn, MLG is gangsta, bro. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, that's top, if that's true, I don't know. But, like, yeah, it was still a great experience. Met a lot of people. But, uh, yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. That world um, is crazy. <laughs> that world is crazy. That's something I've, uh, I've thought about getting into the content creation space within uh, fighting games. We're not at the point where our prize pools are, are in the millions. A big prize pool for a fighting game is uh, uh, thousands. Like it could get up to 20, 30,000 would be like the biggest, yeah. you know, yeah. for the most part. It's still pretty low. That's why when people like have said, like, I'm a sponsored player and I've heard like, oh, so you play professionally. It's like, this is not a profession. No, <laughs> no, like, no. Yeah, it, it, it's true. In fighting games, unless you're getting like top two, like right. every time. Even yeah, it, it does. Too. Like you still got to travel all over the world. You got to hit every major. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm talking about like if you really want to make like yeah a successful like way of life, living mm -hmm. amount of money. Like you can get by. Like well, make... yeah, because like yeah, I'd say with fighting game players, like the prize pools aren't as big, so you kind of have to bank on flying to everything, having a sponsor mm -hmm. that does that for you. Also, you you need to stream because you need other revenue right. sources coming in. And like a YouTube, like if you look at like Sonic Fox, he's the biggest fighting game player in the world. But like, yes, he does win tournaments, but he also has a YouTube channel and mm -hmm. he releases videos like a few a week that all yeah. get like, like 100,000, 200,000 views. You know, he does have a stream, which, you know, like he has multiple sources of revenue. I imagine if he was just playing playing he probably wouldn't he'd probably still be living paycheck to paycheck you know but with everything i'm very sure he's doing great but like yeah you, you yeah. do kind of have he's, to diversify right with your that's exactly right so he's like the top one percent of people who can 100 you know I mean? yeah for sure um, for sure both in the fighting game community yeah it all comes down to being able to create content there are so many incredible players who like unlike my position like i am i'm very career focused and this is something that i love doing on the side they, there are players yeah. who really want to like do this for a living like this is what they want to do they want to travel they want to play fighting games and that's that's really what they want but they don't have any social media presence they they mm -hmm. don't stream they don't do any of that those things and i'm like this is a genre that you know there are some big things coming very short well not very shortly but that were we got a little more information about just a couple days ago um, that will increase the prize pots and kind of the community uh, growth for fighting games. I'll kind of get into that in a second. You're talking about um, Riot, Riot's game? Yeah, Project Down. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's going to oh, bring yeah. a lot into it. But in the meantime, right now, like if you want if you want to be serious and you want to do this competitively and you want that to be your, quote, 9 to 5, even though you'll be paying more than 9 to 5. For, um, you have, yeah, you, you have to. <laughs> you, ha you have to be able to um create some sort of following on social media and you need to be able to monetize it yeah you know I mean, exactly. it's as simple as that i've that's something i've been talking about doing <clears throat> for for six weeks to eight weeks and it's just something where <laughs> clearly it's not a priority for me because i haven't started it but yeah i was even um, saying like if you want i can i could try to make you some logos and stuff if you want just let me know like oh, yeah and i'll probably problem. take you up on that it's really one of those things where um, I was having a conversation with somebody and we were talking about life currencies and I'll tell you what I mean by that. <laughs> and he was saying, you know what, my currency right now, the most important currency to me is my stress. So he's like, all the decisions I make, I, I weigh how much stress this is going to cause me in my life. Yep. And I was like, that's awesome. My biggest currency right now is time. Like all yeah. the decisions I make, how much of my time is this going to take and will I enjoy doing it? Mine is you a know? mixture of the two, basically, yeah. is what I'd say. And it's one of those things where I think i'm not sure i what i need to do is i need to give it a shot i'm just not sure if i'd enjoy it yet you know what i mean and i know i'd have to give it a lot of time and that's did why ha i haven't started it yet did you have fun recently at the big one that you flew to because i know you got top eight like was that fun oh yeah that was a blast i don't mean playing fighting games i mean content creation and streaming wise. oh oh gotcha okay yeah, okay yeah, yeah. got it got uh, it fighting games i i love fighting games i'm sure i'll always play cool. fighting games in some capacity but yeah um Going to LA was great. There's another opportunity that I'm I'm budgeting for, um, that the team is is helping out pretty significantly with uh, in Chicago at the end of. January, oh, nice, very cool. Which I'm, I'm doing my best to figure out how to go to. Um, but yeah, uh, being able to travel to different cities and have fun uh, doing something you love around a whole lot of other people who love doing the same thing that you love. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Like, 
it's one hundred percent. There's actually no feeling like it. Like, like yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I guess that's not true. The the closest thing would be like if you go to a basketball game or something. But I guess the difference that that's like an added level is it's not like you're watching these star players on the thing. It's like the star players come and sit with you. They're one of you, and they're going up there, and you know what I mean. It's like right. the crowd is everyone there in the crowd is participating in the tournament it's not just you know what i mean like the yeah. players are the crowd you know <laughs> like if you really it's love like... this stuff a major feels like a combination of like a cookout the super bowl and like a pickup football game you know what i mean like it's all of those things um yeah. assuming you love like what's going on there if you don't like video games it, it'll just feel like noise um, <laughs> you know. you'll be like i don't know what's happening everyone's excited and i'm i'm <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Everyone keeps telling me my neutral's off. I don't know what I need to do. <laughs> Everyone keeps saying I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sick no scoper. What's a no scope? What am yeah. I doing? Is that the spinning thing? Like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Get me out of this room right now. Um, but you know what? Um, I've always said that I can't speak for other gaming communities, but I, I imagine it's the same for all communities. But within fighting games, you know, I understand video games can be a very solitary hobby you know it's very it can be very much i do this by myself and i enjoy it maybe i talk to people online and because of that the communities probably get a, a stereotypical rap of being antisocial and weird and all of these things they do which is annoying you know but when you i have made so many friends who are so well off and just love this hobby you know what i mean and still yep. have uh, goals and aspirations and all of these things it's just everyday people like having a great time you know what i mean it's, it's exactly it's a shame that people still feel that way when they yeah much about they, it. and they still have that like they just assume that a, a pro gamer is like some you know heavy set um you know young person it's like dude half the people are in their 20s some are in their 30s now most of them go to the gym every day most of like a majority of the programmers are actually in good shape because they care about keeping their brain you know, in great shape so that they can play, you know, like a lot of them eat healthy. Mm -hmm. like, like even when we flew to uh, tournaments and stuff, like everyone was eating like granola balls and fruit and oatmeal and stuff those days because they wanted to have clear heads, you know, like taking yeah. fish oil pills, like all those things were normal. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to go into the fact that Adderall is very widely used in most competitive games, right. but you know, that that's something you can't really get away from, unfortunately. So, but it is what it is. But, um, I'm but yeah, just, like uh, mainlining coffee and tea. Mostly. Yeah, I do, I do coffee for sure. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I, I guess for me, like when it came to competitive, like like I said, I was in the clan with Alien vs Predator, and then when I finally started to play StarCraft, I just knew about clans. Um, I didn't know anything about competitive gaming. Um, mm -hmm. But I got into StarCraft, and I got really good at StarCraft and the expansion Brood War. But I got good. But then I got into this kind of StarCraft had this map editor where you could make you interesting things, and there was a version called Zero Cutter or Fastest Map Possible, which is essentially it's the same game but they kind of cheated the map and found a way to stack minerals on top of each other and put them right next to the base. So what uh -huh. it essentially did is it's still the game, but you're getting minerals faster. So suddenly your building speed and your micro skills are like at four times the speed because like before in the game, it might take 20, 25 minutes or 21 minutes or something to max out your units. You couldn't have more than 200. Mm -hmm. A really good, at fastest map possible player, me and friends could max out in seven minutes and 10 seconds. Like, yeah. so suddenly it, it creates a much faster paced oh. game. It's like the same game, but it's much faster paced. But because all of your minerals aren't spread out like they're on a regular map, it also makes your base very vulnerable to attacks on your workers that gather currency. Because if you do any AOE attacks, you blow them all up. And next thing you know, you're out of money and you lose, right? So, yeah. um, but I got into that. And uh, it's kind of interesting how this works because I just fell into a group of friends. <laughs> uh, I just met them and they were really nice and just let me play with them. I added all of them and then they weren't a clan. They just hung out in this channel called Evanla. And the guy I played with, his name was Ryan underscore Tirith. Oh my God. And then Crazy Dash Goku. And then there, were, there was Showdown Pro and then Van Helsing were like the ones that I played with the most. And we were just a group of friends, but we had gotten so good. Originally, Ryan and Goku and Sho did, but then I started joining in in fights, too. They got so good that clans used to have bots that would have the stats of their ranks against all the other clans, you know? And that was really fun. You wanted to be you wanted to be up on all the clans. That meant you were the best, right? Slayer was one of the best. But what was funny is the, the channel Evanla was on those bots as if we were a clan. We were just a group of friends, but we were we were so good that, like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. it was really cool. So, like, that, that started the whole, like, having a little bit of an ego and, like, liking winning. Like, I liked... Mm -hmm. Like, I looked forward to 2v2s and stuff with, like, an actual clan and keeping stats. And, you know, yeah. I liked that stuff. Um, 
and then the first thing, and then the crazy thing is the exact same thing happened uh, with uh, Halo 2 because uh, in, in StarCraft, I met these guys that were insanely good and they were just really nice and they took me under their wing, right? They just taught me everything they knew and I got better like way faster. Uh, in Halo 2, like Halo 1, I beat all my friends, but let's be fair, my friends are, they don't play Halo a lot, right? And then Halo 2, I was decent, but uh, I went, uh, my mom surprised me because we didn't have a lot of money. We always had dial up. So we yeah. couldn't afford cable internet, which you needed to play Halo 2. So when my mom got remarried and we got a house and everything, Christmas present for me, which was like, because we, we didn't really get expensive gifts. Like I said, we didn't have anything. So this was a huge deal. Yeah. I got an Xbox with Halo 2. And she said, by the way, I got Comcast internet. So we have, oh, no. and I was like, oh my God, because she was going to get Comcast anyway for the house. So she was like, I got you an Xbox with Halo 2. You can now play that with people yeah. and it was the first and the crazy thing was the irony was i played a lot of halo 2 i loved it but i never got to play halo 1 because you could play on xbox connect but if yeah. you had dial up it was like not happening right? right so i signed up for xbox connect because i wanted to play some halo 1 and yeah. uh i couldn't find anybody but i was in this room with this guy uh, and he was like, oh, we can't find anybody. Hey, do you want to go play some Halo 2? And I said, okay, sure. He added me. His name, his gamer tag was, it was luck. Mm -hmm. Didn't think anything of it. I don't know anything. Uh, he, uh, he was like, oh, you're pretty good. And I was like, are you joking with me? Because he's picking up the sniper and the whole team's dead. I'd never seen anything like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. He also then invited me to some customs over the next month. And I felt like I was just awful. And you started with a battle rifle and there was no radar and all this stuff. you know. And I, and I always hated radar, so I was fine with that. But I had no idea what I was doing. Like I just would grab flags and grab balls and, and things like that. It, I know that, that can be a clip. I'm not gonna that. But anyway, yeah, Cinema, but yeah, Cinema. like like grab all those things, <laughs> and I thought I was just getting wrecked. And then by the end of the month, I noticed when I wouldn't play with them though, when I went into custom, suddenly I was destroying people. So I was getting better. It just didn't feel like it, like with right. them. But at the end of the month, I wasn't dying all the time. I could at least hold my own a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, and then the craziest thing happened was there was a website back in the day. For those of you who played Halo 2, you'll know this. It was called Halo. What was it? Haloforum.com or Halo2Forum.com. It was the main Halo Hub website. So everyone posted montages, gameplays. There was a front page thing say, saying the first ranked team, I believe it was uh, 3D at the time, they were formerly mm -hmm. STK, versus the fourth ranked team, Exit Wounds. And when I watched the gameplay, I was like, oh, there's pro Halo players? That's cool. The POV I was watching was It Was Lux. <laughs> Oh. And I was like, and I remember going, his name's Tyler. I was like, Tyler, you're a Halo player? And I remember him go, a professional Halo player. Who, and I, if I'm correct, he said something like, yeah, you didn't know that? And I was like, <laughs> there are pro Halo players? <laughs> like, <laughs> and they were really nice. And then the cool thing was that one of the MLG events, because those were live, you know, they had yeah. them all around the country. MLG did this thing where they really took the risk and they had a Halo circuit, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. And there was one in 05, it was in Seattle. And yep. it was luck and them were coming because they were one of the top four teams. So I had my mom, she took me and dropped me off just so I could meet them and hang out. And then I met like other people. And it was so weird seeing it in 05 because everyone, they had all these CRTs. A lot of people brought their own Xboxes. It was so different than even just a year later when they had bigger sponsorships. It was it was yeah. so funny. Like talk yeah. about grassroots, man. Like, like it was For great. Sure. But I remember meeting them. I met a guy named Enomini Patri, who is still one of my friends to this day, Jeff. But he was a really good Halo player. Uh, Flankster came on the scene back then. Uh, I think IGS just showed up, which became, for those of you that play Halo, they became Carbon later. And if I remember correctly, Gandhi was there, Shockwave. And those of you who know Strongside, he's a huge name now. I believe that was one of his first tournaments with a pro team because a lot of people were saying there's this new guy named Strongside. Everyone's watching his POV. Watch him. Like, he just never dies. <laughs> and he invented yeah. what they called strong siding, where you, I don't know if he invented it, but he got famous for it because he was the best at it, where you'd, you'd look at the ground and put your back to them so that you're hiding your head, so it's hard to get that last headshot. <laughs> and he'd, uh... like, get away all the time, and it was the most annoying thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it was it was, the, it was one of the coolest experiences of my life. I didn't even play, just meeting them, talking Halo, seeing, like, like watching the POVs of people play on this level. Like, I got, like, a, like, I got this, like, just fire that i'd never had before it was it was the i i'd never been more excited in my life and you know till this day i'm 35 and even though i'm not competing when i decide i want to get good at something and i'm really good into it i get that same feeling and it actually i feel like it actually trumps everything in my life when i love a game mm -hmm. to the point where i have to actually maintain my like i'll always work <laughs> and pay bills but i have to like maintain the other stuff i'm supposed to do like my plans you know it's like yeah no you yeah. need to make time for this and this because like even right now i'm so obsessed with halo infinite it's my favorite halo since halo 2 all yeah. i want to do is play like legitimately like all i want and i haven't felt that way since halo 2 because i liked halo 3 but not yeah. as much as halo 2 or 1 
And then yeah. uh, Halo 5 I thought was good, but again, didn't like it as much as 2 or 1. This one is everything I wanted, I guess, Halo 3 to be uh, for me. Yeah. So if it yeah. was made in modern times. So, and I'll get into that in a bit because Infinite just came out. But yeah, but yeah like it's... Uh, yeah, and then with fighting games, um, I played them a lot as a kid, but I never played them competitively. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I was genuinely just button mashing. You know, Mortal Kombat yeah. had cool fatalities and blood, you know. And then Soul Calibur. Yeah, and Soul <laughs> Calibur, the first, uh, I got really into Soul Calibur because I had a Dreamcast, and there was a, I think the first or second character you unlocked, his name was Huang. He was like my boy. Like, Whoa, and then, and, and then, uh, uh, no, just Huang. It was Huang. H W. Oh, Soul Calibur. I was thinking second for a yeah. second. Huang. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah. Huang. I played Huang and then Kalik. And then, uh, but the first time I had gotten into a game competitively was MK9. And I think I, I, I was really liking the game, but I met you. Like, you were the one that I met. And it was the first time you were talking about stuff. And it reminded me of when I started learning stuff in Halo and in StarCraft. Like, I was like, oh, there's all this tech I don't know. And I think that's when it clicked for me that every genre of game has tech. It yeah. just comes down to if you get into it or not. And yeah. then I did it with MK9. And then I think I went to Pacific Northwest Majors, my first tournament. I tied for ninth. Um, but then after that, all the local tournaments I went to, I think all of them but one, I think, I got first or second. Like Sweet. the ones that I showed up to, I got first or second. I played a lot. I mashed up a lot against like Hangnail at the time and Kevin Seven were a lot of the ones I matched up against. Shujinki Dink uh, came down for a few of them, which was awesome. And yeah. then one of the ones I got like sixth, the guy who won the tournament is the guy I lost to. And I was actually beating him, but I was learning a new character named Mal uh, Melina. For me, was a new character because I made Liu Kang. And yeah. because of the way I used my fingers, I kept accidentally pausing to do the combo. Yeah, I so I it. paused and then I disqualified myself because I did it a second time. And I was ahead. I was winning. Like, I was yeah. like, damn. Like, for, uh, <laughs> but, for, but for, it was. Sorry. sorry. No, sorry. Uh, I was just saying, but just it was a great community. That. Like. <laughs> Fail. You go, you go, you go. <laughs> I just had that for the longest time in Guilty Gear. Whenever I would try to do something, uh, because I'm used to playing on stick and I play this game on a regular gamepad, the mm -hmm. way my fingers would move, I would always accidentally hit the share button, so I'd just get clips of <laughs> losing. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah <laughs> that's basically what I was doing with the pause button because the way I would do her combo was uh, like I think it was for like two of the buttons, I would I would have to slide from like I think it was the trigger to like X or something, and I would yeah. accidentally. Like, I'm not looking down, so I'm thinking I'm hitting X, but I'd hit the start button because of how I hold my controller. And I was like, oh, no. Uh, so, and the weird thing is, in training, it never happened. I think it was just because I was also nervous at the tournament because people were watching you, like you said. It. And, like, and, I, and, I, and I was like, and I was like, I've only been using this character for a week, and oh my god, I might win this thing. This is great. Like, I'm getting, I've gotten really good at this game. And then all of a sudden, pause tactics is what I called it. I was like, oh no. Oh, <laughs> and they were no, like, if you, they were like, if you do it again, you're disqualified. And then I was ahead. I was literally winning. And then I paused, and I, and I was like, no. Uh, like I was like, oh no. Uh, yeah, but he was actually really, it. he was actually a really good sub. I think that. I think that uh, he ended up winning with sub. I think his name was KNO Terror. He was a really cool guy. But I think uh, Molina was a little difficult uh, for sub because, like, if you don't dive kick constantly, he can catch you with a clone, right? With the dive kick. Right. But, like, outside of that, she had, a, like, like, a lot of annoying things. Like, I could roll under his freeze balls and stuff. So, like, it was really, like, you know, I was kind of yeah. like, I like yeah. this matchup. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Fortune, and I actually, I've been meaning to go shopping and find a disc, but they just made MK9 backwards compatible on the Series X. Like, they just did it the other day. It's not available for digital purchase. Otherwise, I would have been on it. I have to go find a disc, but they just I brought it back. I have no words. <laughs> I, we need to play? Because yeah. that's like my favorite fighting game of all time. Like, if they ever put that back on the circuit in like a small field, I would literally just play that. Like, I'm not Absolutely. even joking. If they brought like modern netcode to MK9, I would Dude, be yeah. on Yeah. And I love the poke system for that game. The fact that it actually was dictated by whether you were standing or ducking and also blocking. Yep. Like, like uh -huh. you actually could get different frames. I'd say the only thing about that game that was messed up, Cabal was a little stupid because he built, and it wasn't even just that he could cancel. It was that he built meter constantly. That was unfair. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I think the only thing that sucked about that game that they never were able to fix was player one advantage. Like, like that really yeah, did suck on land. On land, it was a little annoying. But, um, yeah, yeah. but, you know, second player still won all the time. So, I mean, it's not like it... But it's still an advantage. It definitely is, you know. So yeah, um, they're they're still working on it. I think uh, MK9 is the most fun game that they've ever made. I think uh, no. NRS Studios. That is, um, I think the best game that they've ever made. And I take into consideration like gameplay, character design, uh, full like content package that you get for your purchase. Probably Injustice Two. I think that game is really cool. Um, and that's actually the one that I missed out on. I played a good amount of one. I played Green Arrow, yeah. and then my secondary was uh, 
uh, Green Lantern, but two, I bought it, and then I think yeah. right when it came out, I was playing other things, and I never did get, I never really played it. You know, I was I was learning yeah. Robin. I liked Robin, and then I, I just didn't wasn't able to stick with it. Yeah, well, uh, the NRS community is uh, waiting very impatiently for the next uh, the next Mortal Kombat <laughs> or whatever game they're making the announcement. And I know there's a cycle. The game dies after two years, and then everybody goes and plays the previous game because they're bored of the current mm-hmm. game, and then they're going to announce mm-hmm. announce something new. Um, there's rumors that they got Marvel, so it could be a Marvel versus DC game. Yeah, um, that, that, cool. that that's what I was wondering if you did like a Marvel versus. DC. They also have, since they have DC, I always felt like they could always do a. They could always do an actual good remake of MK vs. DC Universe if they wanted to. That could be kind of interesting, like MK vs. Yeah, Justice. Yeah. I don't know, but... Uh, Marvel vs. DC would be like a dream game, but... For sure, for Marvel sure. Marvel vs. Capcom is my favorite fighting game <laughs> series of all time. And it feels like, to me, like, Capcom presents the new Mortal Kombat. It's like, okay, like, I guess I'll take it. You know what I mean? That's what people <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's not what I want, but fine. This is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair no that's fair yeah. that's fair uh, yeah. but um what uh so i'm not really familiar with uh the modern kind of shooting game circuit or what uh esports looks like for modern shooting games i'm very yeah. familiar with fighting games but i don't know what's yeah. going on in that world so the way you are with fighting games i would say i'm, I'm kind of like that with shooters i feel like i pick them up really quickly um because i just played years of halo and personally i personally find even though i like a lot of other shooters i find halo to be the most difficult shooter competitively like if you played at the top level more than the other ones like i've seen many halo pros go on to other um shooting games and and be pros i yeah. rarely see people come from other games and go pro in halo like I, i'm just gonna be honest it's true um um there have been a few but it's very rare um Mm -hmm. and i think what it is in in a lot of shooters like call of duty or counter strike or um valorant now which is basically counter strike 3.0 or whatever in my opinion uh with abilities uh essentially they rely on fast reaction time and bursts of accuracy right because essentially Uh you hit the head it's over right in Halo, you actually have to shoot them enough times to lower the shield, then it becomes the same thing, where the headshot wins. But because of that, it leaves lots of time for the person to outstrafe you, maneuver while they're shooting you. So you actually have to do all of that, plus you have to maintain accuracy for the for the first two, three seconds of that fight, and hopefully yeah. not miss it. So there's a lot more to it, and then that's with four opponents. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it, it's a totally different ball game. Um, and for me, it, I, I just love watching the team dynamics, you know? Um, And on the circuits, it's basically, with most shooters, uh, the default settings usually aren't aren't great for competitive. Like uh, like a lot of shooters, um, like Halo, for instance, you know, default, there's radar. You don't start with a battle rifle, you start with like an SMG, which as you can imagine, isn't a good thing because whatever team gets the battle rifles first, if they're good, they're just going to hold those spawns and not let you get them and the game's over, right? right? So in Halo, everyone starts with a battle rifle. It's a fair weapon. It's a four shot kill if you hit it perfectly. The last shot's a headshot. Um, and you can zoom in at like a good like 1.4, 1.5 range. So it's a great all around starting weapon. And there's no radar. So there is no, mm-hmm. nothing that promotes camping because radar is bad. Um, in my opinion, radar like single handedly ruins shooters because essentially it rewards you with stuff for free without earning it. And then it also um, rewards you for sitting still and camping and like punishing people who run by you. You know what I mean? Yeah, you should have yeah. to use your eyes and ears to find people. So most circuits, what they'll do is they'll take the game. They'll uh, change the rules around that work well for a competitive setting. And then uh, they'll decide on which maps are balanced enough to create game types on. And then whatever different game types the game has, um, they will design uh, an entire system around it. Um, They're they're typically uh, double elimination. So if you lose, you go into loser's bracket, similar to fighting games, then you have to fight your way through. Um, If you end up making it back to the championship against a team that knocked you in the bracket, you actually have to reset the bracket and then win again, obviously. Yeah. so, uh, yeah, I think right now in Halo, most of the games are best of three. And then once you get to higher brackets, it becomes uh, uh, best of five. Um, so when you, so if you lose, you essentially have to reset the best of five and then go again. Um, so it Got essentially it. becomes a best of 11, right? Um, yeah. And that's how it always was with like Halo 2 and, and I believe 3. And it has been that way since. Um, 
and and and, and uh, I don't know if all shooters work that way, but I know a lot of them are similar. And I believe I think even Call of Duty and stuff, from what I remember, they also have double elimination because it's not fair. Because you could be really good and make some mistakes and lose. And if it's a if it's a you know, there's what's the point of flying out to a tournament if 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 it's a one shot, you lose, you're out. You know, you have to have a chance right. to come back. So, um, and right. they usually have prize pools. Mo most most uh, circuits will have. Um, different sponsorship packages they get for each event and usually uh while they're streaming it they'll promote those uh those um those companies that sponsored the event and those companies usually contribute to the prize pool along with the the circuit um so yeah. you know the sponsor the sponsors come through the, those will be the advertisements that you'll see on twitch or or the merchandise or whatever's being sold or or they might do like replay like say it's doritos they might say this is the doritos replay of the day or whatever you know it's all it's all advertisements just like tv basically um and a lot of the the pro tournaments have top, you know, at least I'd say in most uh, most things like the top eight are usually considered the top eight pros, and then I think top sixteen is usually still pro, but the top eight are the usually the the you want top eight, right? Usually right. in most things, I, I think it's similar to fighting games. Um, yeah, for for visibility, you want you want top eight for sure. That's the that's the that's the highlight at the end of the event. Yeah. Yeah, because in the past in yeah. Halo, the top 16 is considered pro. You want at least top eight. Uh, uh, 17 through 32 are considered semi-pro, semi-pro yeah. um, uh, rankings, basically. Um, so, and I think a lot of them do run similarly to that. Like they might have variations based on the game types for those specific games, um, but ultimately most circuits run in a similar way. Um, they are they are changing because you used to have things like Major League Gaming, which set the thing up with Halo, and then you had other leagues. But now you even have like sometimes the companies are now starting the leagues now with some of these games you know like, like now major league yeah. gaming i don't i don't think they're around anymore but now with the new halo infinite they have hcs and i believe even which hit with halo 5 i think they had hcs as well which uh i i, I believe uh 343 people from 343 are, are part of it it's like a partnership thing I, I don't know for sure but i believe it seems like it's like that it's like it's more integrated into the game itself versus it being like this third party group that does it you know like it seems like there's a lot yeah. more collaboration now for these um esports communities for different games which i think is great because then yeah. the 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 dev developers can do really cool stuff for events and stuff you know and yeah. then also with that collaboration they can make sure that the events are really well balanced and organized and uh you know like just just very fair for everybody which i think is great and that's something that they already started with halo uh infinite they already had a tournament this last weekend which is an online qualifier for the first actual event like old old and school old school days where it's going to be in raleigh uh, I believe it's in December. That's the first uh, like actual right. event. And so something with fighting games, and I'm just curious, like something that's really big in fighting games, uh, competitive scene, is that the tournaments are all uh, completely open to anybody. There are invitationals, but for the yes. most part, anybody who wants to play can come play, and that's how you get amazing surprises. Yeah. You know, are shooters like yeah. that too? Yeah. Uh, so essentially, uh, most of the time. Uh, nowadays they have online qualifiers and stuff and, and a lot of times what those did was helped you get a better seed for the tournament mm -hmm. essentially yeah. but you could still show up for the tournament and all the amateur teams can compete and make it and as long as you keep winning your games you make it into the semi pros and the pro bracket just like everyone else and the pro teams Sweet. have to play you but the pro teams have a higher seed so as you can imagine right. there are certain people they're gonna you're gonna have to get to a certain place before you can even play them um, right uh, but and, and also, if I'm correct, I think I think in Halo back in the day, I don't know if this has changed, but I remember back in the Halo Two days, and I think the Halo Threes, the final event of the year, wherever it was held, I believe the final event were the championships. So I think only the top 16 teams are invited to that one because that's like all the points for the whole year. Um, and I and I don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure that's how it was because I I flew to the final Halo Two event, which was in Vegas, to try to support. Uh, it was luck and exit wounds in those guys because they made it in the top 16. Um, yeah. And I just flew down because I'd never been to a championship and I just went for fun with my friend. Um, yeah. And it was a really cool experience. It was really awesome. Like just all the top 16 teams going at it. Of course, it's Vegas, so it was fun. Right. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but yeah, and it was actually the only time, that was the uh, first time I've been to Vegas. Only time actually so far, but it was a lot of fun. So yeah, uh, yeah yes, it is open to uh, everybody. Even this nice. HGS event, um, I think the highest event they ever had in history was a Halo Three event where there was like 260 or 270 teams. There's 270 teams. It was a lot. It was insane. Oh. This event, because there were all these open teams for the Halo Infinite, there were over 400 teams. Wow. It was insane. Yeah, I mean, it was the coolest has, thing. Everything has uh, gained so much traction. COVID being a huge yeah. part of it, like gaming has exploded. I think so. You know what I mean? I think because so. People yeah. are inside a lot more often than they they ever were before, and uh, on top of 100%. that, technology has advanced in such a way where 
regardless of what you're looking for, if you're looking for a huge cinematic drama or, uh, you know, what we're talking about, a, a competitive hobby or maybe even confession, like it's all out there for you if you want it. Oh, 100%. And I, yeah. and I would say, like, what you t uh, talked about earlier is very valid. Now, the fact mm -hmm. that the Internet's better, net codes are better. I mean, if you can't hold the, the live tournaments, you can still host it online. I mean, with Twitch and stuff now, all the players could just stream on their Twitch channels. channels and then as long as yeah. they give you permission, you can use your own broadcasters to link all the videos in just like you would at the tournament. So that's yeah. what that's what they do now. You, and so, you know, whether you're at, online or at home, I mean, they could still set up a huge you know, hundred thousand dollar tournament or whatever. It's, it's pretty amazing. Like, like it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's cool. And it's cool because the versatility does show that in situations like this competitive gaming is here to stay. Like, like other businesses may shut down and stuff, but competitive gaming that can still happen from home. They can still have the championships yeah. from home. Maybe they won't have the big spectacles and flashing lights and them being on stage, but they can still host the tournament. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's, totally. it's, it's a very different world <laughs> nowadays, that, which opens up endless opportunities. So yeah, that's what you were just speaking to, just kind of being able to join these tournaments at home. That's how I was uh, discovered for the team I'm on, is I was uh, I was bored and I started playing an online exhibition series and I was reached out to like, hey, do you play online? I was like, eh, sometimes, not really, like, not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, through that conversation and me trying to talk somebody out of what I didn't realize was a sponsorship opportunity, he was like, yeah, well, you know, we're we're... Uh, we have this team put together and we're working on expanding in this game. And if you're interested, we'd love to, you know, talk further. And I was like, well, you know, I'm like planning a wedding and like, I'm really busy with my job and I'm doing this film podcast and I'm going to do this and they're doing that. And they were like, it doesn't matter. You're good. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> cool. you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So it's one of those things where that would have never happened um, without this kind of online environment. Cause that was very much just uh, my favorite part about playing fighting games was the offline aspect. And it still is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, even in, in my situation, I, I think of every all of these like really strong players who maybe didn't get out to those offline events or maybe wouldn't get yeah. um, discovered uh, without all of these huge sure. opportunities to be seen. You know what I mean? It's pretty it, it, exciting. 100%. That was actually something I noticed back in, in Halo 2. I'm not going to say that all the players that made it were players of family of effluence because that's not true. There were definitely some yeah. players that weren't. But it, I mean, you know, unless you lived yeah. near the event... Right. Your parents had to at least have enough money to afford to pay for a plane ticket for you and hotel stay. Right. You know what I mean? And, and a lot, a lot of, of people money. could not could not do that. Like yeah. I know originally my mom could not do that. Like like the fact that yeah. there was a, a, a Seattle event and she dropped me off was really nice. You know. And after yeah. that, I don't think they came back to Seattle because <laughs> uh, <laughs> it had a really it had a really low turnout if I remember correctly. Um, uh. But um, but yeah, like like I don't remember. I don't think they did. Uh, but they did do. Uh, but they did. They usually come to uh, California, which is interesting because now with Halo Infinite coming out, I'm actually really, really into it. So I'm, I'm trying to actually get better. I don't know if I want to try to do a team situation, but if I did, the first uh, uh, in-person tournament is in Raleigh, but the second one there are online qualifiers, and the second one's actually going to be in Anaheim, which is very traditional. There's usually one in Anaheim, and that's in February, California. Yeah. So. I'm thinking by then, if I can save up some money, if I find a team, like if, if I decide I want to do this, that would probably be the first one I can, I would attend if I did it, but yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, so yeah. far I'm doing well, but um, I mean, I'm 35. I do feel like my reaction is not as good as it was, but I, but I know if I play a lot, it gets better. So um, yeah. it's already better than it was the first two days. Like, um, like I'm starting to have some of those <laughs> moments, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, and those feel so good when you, when you start having those, like they really do. Like, like, and what I love about it is it shows you how much of it is a mental game, because if you start getting on yourself, you start missing shots or you start not playing well, but like, for instance, you, you get some crazy kill tackler all of a sudden, I promise you every person that gets some crazy overkill or kill tackler for the next, at least five minutes, they're insane. And it's because in their head, they feel invincible regardless of what happens. So yeah. there is totally a psychological aspect to competitive gaming, just like there's a psychological aspect oh. to any kind of sport. It is a mental yeah. game before everything else. Like, and my biggest issue back in the day was, I've told you this, I dealt with a lot of anxiety and I also dealt with a lot of lack of self-confidence. And I noticed the days when I felt self-confident, I played very different than the days that I didn't. Yeah. Like the days that I didn't, I was okay. The days that I played with self-confidence, I was like pro good. And yeah. I felt like that was my main issue in Halo. Like I played with a lot of the top people. I was good, but I was inconsistent. So some days mm -hmm. they would be like, you're insane. And some days they'd be like, uh, you need work. You know what I mean? And I noticed that. Yeah. And I noticed it always came down to a mixture of my anxiety and self-confidence, right? Um, and at the yeah. time, I also didn't know anything about anxiety medication because I thought I was being tough and dealing with it. But 
that doesn't help when, okay, I'm dealing with it, but my eyes are blurring and stuff because I'm so anxious and I'm still trying to play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now I have, I'm yeah. on anti-anxiety meds. So like now when I get nervous, my heart races, but it feels like normal racing, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, God, I wish I had these anti-anxiety pills when I was younger. It would have been a whole different thing. Like, uh, and also self-confidence is another thing. It's like, you know, it's like if you lose or you have a bad game, don't let that get to you. You know, like like everyone had the pros have terrible exactly. games sometimes. It's just brush it off. The best thing to do is actually not just watch pro gameplays. When you have a bad game, that's the one you should watch. What did yeah, you absolutely. do when you were having a bad day? What pattern did you fall into? When and remember how you were thinking. Like, what pattern does that create in the game that's leading to this con basically circular shitty outcome? Like, because usually when you have a bad game, it's usually because you get in a bad headspace and it doesn't correct, and then it just goes that way through the game, right? Um, yeah. so watch yeah. the replays you do worst at rather than all the ones where you have the highlights. Cause clearly those games you were already wrecking. It's better to watch the stuff where you had problems so that you have a visual indicator or an emotional indicator or whatever of when it starts, you see it immediately and you try to stop it. You we, know what uh, I mean? So. We call it mental stack. Um, and essentially what that is, is how much can you essentially make a subconscious thought so you can stay completely engaged into what's happening in the moment you know what i mean for example if you're having yeah, a bad day something that. will happen and then you're going to think about it you're gonna be like that was dumb and while you're having that thought you're going to get hit again you know what <laughs> yep. i mean um yep. so it's one of those things where when, when i practice a lot of it is how like instead of can i just make it so if somebody jumps at me and i want to do something that hits them out of the air how long is it going to take me for to not even think about that action like how long mm -hmm. is it going to take me to see them jump and instinctually hit a button like, boom, done. You know what I mean? And then if I can do that, how many aspects of my strategy can I do that with? Like, how much can I get just completely, essentially subconscious and reactionary to the point where I don't have to think, he jumped. What do I do? Here's what I do. Done. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. he jumped, I hit a button. You know what And I mean? then you have character specific options too that build into that entire repertoire yeah. of, 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 um, options that you're, you're you're working on you know like um so yeah, yeah. i could totally feel you on that one I, i've been uh well my friend uh my friends and teammates have been joking with me that um that i'm the most stressed or, well i say that i'm the most stressed person on the team <laughs> and they say it's because i'll tell you why so in a fighting game bracket for the game i play now guilty gear strive for the most part it's a uh, first to three games wins and i have a very reactionary play style and almost always almost always round. i lose the first two games <laughs> Yeah. I lose the first two games. And so they they joke with me that I essentially, they say I play like ass for two games and then I feel like actually playing the game. But, but you're uh, actually learning your opponent in those two games is what you're Yeah, doing. exactly. But I don't know if I know them by the third game. So the, by the time I go to the third game, I'm like, oh, I suck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what and then all of a sudden, like I was joking with one of my training partners yesterday and I'll send you this video of where I just did it in tournament for, for second place. This happened. And like he, oh, I missed this one. Oh shit, I'm gonna have yeah. to watch this one. I didn't um, see this tournament. He, uh, he was talking to me, and I lost the first two games, and I was muted, but I could hear him. And then I won game three, and he goes, "Oh, here we fucking go." It's like everyone knows. Three. Yeah, everyone knows. <laughs> the moment you win game three, you're about to get a, you're about to get a re like a yeah, total I, re that, that happens reversal. to me all the time, and I wish it didn't. I wish I could just run through three games, <laughs> but. I'm uh I'm sometimes too reactionary. Like sometimes I should make more decisions, yeah. but I almost want to I want to take your game plan and break it down to where you feel like you can't do anything. You know what I mean? But yeah. I need you to make no, no, the first I, move I'm, so I could do that. I'm the same way in Halo. Yeah. Like like if I don't know what to do, I'd rather start by applying pressure. That's a start. Yeah. Like I want to apply pressure. I want you to feel pressured on spawn i want you i want you to be the one feeling like you're not sure what to do when you spawn like that's what i yeah. want uh, i don't want you feeling comfortable um but yeah i would say like my biggest one of my biggest and you probably noticed this too one of my biggest I, i'd say weaknesses is is i start getting frustrated I, and i've learned this and i've started to correct it a bit more um like i've learned that i get more frustrated if there's something i'm playing that i'm not completely happy with playing <laughs> mm -hmm. but like, I want to like it, but there are enough things about it that I'm not sold on it um, or things that turn me off about it, but I keep trying to play it. I find yeah. I get more frustrated when I'm losing to things that I think are stupid or 
I don't understand why they would do that. Like, it seems dumb. Like, why is this, you know, like, 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 and it's, it's like, those are things that most people would be like, yeah, this game isn't for me, but I keep trying mm-hmm. to play it because I want to like it. <laughs> Yeah, and it usually yeah, just yeah. ends ends at, at either I'd say only like ten percent of the time do I get past it and then change my mind. Most of the other time, it's like within the first week or so, if I'm not liking something, I'm probably not going to like it because it's usually the base mechanics of it that I don't like. So yeah. it that's not going to probably change. So if you don't like the mechanics, then it's not for you. You know, um, your first impression is uh, usually the right one. Yeah, for what you like, because yeah. you know what you like and don't like. You know, yeah. I know what I like, what I consider balanced, and what I consider interesting. And if something's mm-hmm. not balanced in the way I like it or interesting, mm-hmm. if there's not enough other things to trump that, then I'm not mm-hmm. gonna. You know what I mean? Like there yeah. are a couple things I didn't like about MK9. I've said that, but overall, I it was like the perfect formula for a fighting game that I I personally loved. Um, yeah. Um, I admit. Um, and I won't lie. I also really liked Soul Calibur Five. Like I liked two a lot, I liked but I liked I liked yeah. five quite a bit. I played a lot of Soul Calibur five, um, yeah. But nine was like the only fighting game I really got into like that, and that's why like I love Halo one. But for competitive, I loved two, three. I thought was a lot of fun on LAN, but online it was very frustrating. And unfortunately, yeah. you have to practice online. And notoriously, people on the West Coast kind of get screwed with that because the, the like like I'd say out of one out of one to two at most out of ten games will be a West Coast host. The rest will always be East or like South central right. so they're always as far away from me as you can get which yep. which unfortunately in something like the new game you know it's designed to have hit uh uh what is it like a hit scan or whatever and all that and that's great and it's really good registration but back then they just had to do the br spread which i think is a great idea for competitive reasons but online mm-hmm. it meant that like someone else is shooting you across the map your shield's going down you shoot them you see it hitting them and their shield's not going down it's like it was right. really frustrating uh and that was kind of my main thing with that um it's a lot yeah. better on mcc by the way right now if you guys have master chief collection they did an update and now you're bullet spread is like way better nowadays especially if you're on pc um nice. i actually found that like if i turn up my monitor 144 hertz and a uh, high frame rate shots connect just a lot better in general so um oh. yeah on pc i actually quite enjoy it so it's kind of cool nice. but the new halo infinite is awesome like if you loved halo 2 it, it, it play it feels kind of like halo 2 or 3 with sprint um yeah. but it's hit scan like halo 2 where your shots just count for the most part and they did something interesting because some people there's this new complaint among some people which i personally just want to smack them in the face if they shut up but it's essentially that in shooters uh when you play on controller there has to be a little bit of aim assist because otherwise there's no way you're going to be able to lock on and keep up with people on like a mouse and keyboard because mouse and keyboard let's be fair they have to point and click and then they have to maintain accuracy but it's easier to do that with your hand than it is with like a joystick so you have to have a little bit of aim assist you have to um and the complaint is that pc players some some are now trying to complain that aim assist is is unfair right <laughs> they're trying to do it in halo uh, and i'm like the funny thing they're trying to do it in apex too and i'm like here's the thing so yes they have a little bit of aim assist on the aim but you also have like for instance you can pick up a sniper rifle and dominate comparatively you also right. can do crazy moves on the keyboard that they can't do on a mount on a controller they just can't yeah. so there's pros and cons so i feel like that argument needs to end but i feel like uh what uh 343 seems to have done i don't know if this is true it is a rumor that someone else told me uh i think uh i was watching elamite elamite a warrior he's an old pro but he streams his name's elamite twitch.tv slash elamite uh but i i think i was in his stream and he, someone told him or he said he had heard that you actually have some aim assist while you're shooting them but then once their shield's gone you have like none or it diminishes by significant amount so that last headshot you're not having as much aim assist which it does feel that way so if that's true it would not surprise me which is kind of interesting because if that's true and i'll be honest it really does feel that way so so i think he's on to something i think there's something like that going on and it is an interesting uh (laughs) compromise (laughs) like it's it's really interesting because sometimes if you're like a lazy shooter and like, like 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 you're on them but you're strafing a little too much like the moment that shield break suddenly your thing can go a little wild and you miss that shot if, if you're if you're too if you're not paying too close uh. attention yeah you really got to focus your joystick you got to make sure you're focusing the whole time uh so like it, it is interesting um and a lot of people were saying and also for any of you that are watching if you guys are having issues on controller where it feels like you just cannot hit anything and it feels like there's no aim assist there is a bug right now that has been found where if you log in on your pc with your controller if you hit enter or anything with your keyboard first or at some point when you're playing, sometimes it will the computer will think you are on mouse and keyboard, so it will automatically turn off aim assist. So even though you're using controller, you now have oh. no auto aim. 
the first day I was playing, I had this happen the whole time. And I actually still ranked in diamond, which makes me feel great. But I was like, yeah. it is so hard to hit things. And I found I was strafing a lot more to keep up with them because I was afraid to move my joystick. I was like, this is so hard, you know? And people yeah. were like, oh, it's it, there's more auto aim. It's, it's easier for me on controller. And I was like, what world do you live in? This feels just like mouse <laughs> aim. And then I found this out. And then I restarted the game because that's how you fix it. And I didn't touch anything with my keyboard because I was typing enter every time, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. it felt it felt way better. It felt more like playing Halo 3 or 2 on a controller. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so much better. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it seems like it's an actual thing. Like, uh, yeah. So it's funny guys the little, infinite. like things we run into. Uh, there's been a conversation around controllers and fighting games too. That the hitbox uh, might be unfair compared to arcade sticks. And, uh, <laughs> there's always going to be those. There's always going to be those. And it's ultimately people that don't that, like losing to stuff. <laughs> exactly. But you know what? It's one of those uh, arguments where it's like they're a little right, um, oh. and it's because. Yeah. If somebody's playing a character that requires charge moves, you can essentially hold your charge and then still make other movements. Like, that is true. That is you know, true. Because you can hold the button down and press another button to like jump, which is true. But also, not too many games are going to come down to that situation. No. You know what I mean? And it's, but, it's but, 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 that uh, yeah. And also, I would say most people would argue what it's, it's harder to use a hitbox too, right? To get used to it, right? So I don't know. Uh, it, yeah, it, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I maybe guess. Not, maybe not I, for you. <laughs> yeah, maybe not for me. I mean, over time, like, I went through a learning curve of learning how to play arcade stick, you know what I mean? But yeah. after, like, two and a half, three weeks, where it did suck, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. eventually, you're like, oh, this is how it works. And it kind of be similar uh, if I were to play on a hitbox, but I, I, I just like the nostalgia of an arcade for sure. stick. You know yeah, what and I mean? You know, that's you know what that's what it is for me. And the truth is, I actually don't care for an arcade stick. Like, like yeah. in the, I used to love the arcade, but like in fighting games, I used to always mess up my moves because I'm bad at it. That's why, till this yeah. day, even though I like Smash, I, I can't get into it because they don't let you use the D-pad. You have to use the stick from what? Like, and and my brother was like, "Yeah, but it's inefficient." I'm like, "Well, then let me use the inefficient way because I like the D-pad." So right. like, I like the fact the that I, like, 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 you know what you need to do? Just do a controller setting where it literally just swaps the D-pad with the joystick. It shouldn't be hard. Like. Just swap right. them, like because I prefer to use the D-pad. If it's inefficient, that's fine. But let me use it because that's what I like in a fighting game. Like because I have exactly. to use the joystick, it completely turns me off. Even though I actually think Smash is awesome. Like that's why I can yeah. never get into it. I'm like I have to use the joystick, and it, you know, like you said, you either like something you don't. I I, I don't mm -hmm. like it, so I'm like I can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> when, when people ask me like if they should get an arcade stick or a hitbox, like will it make their inputs better? Will they drop more? I'm like these fighting games today are made for a controller. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like for the most part, they are developed for what everybody has access to. The other mm -hmm. things are either nostalgia, or you want to like kind of have like that cultural thing or that art yeah. piece. You know what I mean? All that. So it's like for use sure. what you want. Like you know what I mean? It's going to come down to strategy and being able to adapt quicker than another person. Anyway, don't worry about what anybody else is using. Use what you like. You know what I for mean? Sure. That's what it comes down to. You do what you like, whether it be a controller, which. People will say is the least efficient, which I think is nonsense, or a hitbox, which people say was the most efficient, which I think is true, but it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Ultimate, ultimately, they're they're tools, um, right. you know. And if you're good enough, you can kind of overcome most things if you if you like something most of the time. Um, yeah. I also I also want to say um, I talked about like what I may do with Halo Infinite, but why don't yeah. you tell us a little bit about uh, uh, STG and your situation oh. with them and maybe we can use that to lead into our final topic which is where we see the future of competitive gaming going yeah yeah so um the the team that um were, were kind enough to bring me along on the roster are called s tier gaming and it's uh run by a, a couple guys down in the los angeles area who similar to fighting game fashion really built this thing from grassroots and started as a uh, nrs team for mortal kombat um, and they built a really big name for themselves in that scene because their players are really good and they, they do a lot for the community and all of those great things. And they've since tried to, not tried to, are succeeding in expanding into other fighting games. So I was brought on very early for their Guilty Gear um, team and I've worked uh, with the guys to help bring on really strong players to have a team where we can eventually start doing team battles and all of these like really exciting opportunities to really get our name out there, make more money, have a good impact on the community. And now this we is, finally have a large enough roster to do it, which is this. And this part. is for Guilty Gear Strive, correct? The newest one. Yep. Yep. Okay, yep, cool. For, for Guilty Gear Strive. So um, what I'm doing with them is, you know, it's still like, it feels like a mix between a hobby and a side hustle right now because <laughs> Um, I have been fortunate enough to make uh, more money than I expected to, 
this year make on fighting games with uh, how I've been placing in tournaments. Um, but also, the most important part to me is that I always say, you know, the best part about fighting games is the people who love fighting games. It's the it's the best part of the genre for sure. So it's the community. Where I see my future is having um, the opportunity to be able to travel more often than I could before, go to large events, um, and spend time with people who, like me, are, are really good at this stuff. You know what I mean? And if I can, spend time with the people who are better than me and hopefully improve so I could just be in that environment, talk to them, and hopefully continue to place well in tournaments, get the team name out there more, make a little bit of money for myself, um, and visit as many states as I can feel safe visiting right now you know there's a there's a yeah, big tournament sure. that there was an opportunity to travel out to at the end of this month called ceo uh, yeah. which is in florida and uh the creator of that event his name is uh alex bailey he's awesome he uh he made it so uh vaccines are required masks are required all of those measures in florida which is a pretty big deal with that being said i don't i'm not comfortable being in a big arena of 3200 people in florida you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't blame you. I that, totally understand that one. That that's kind of what it gets down to. So, um, I'm I'm kind of picking and choosing at the ones I want to go to. Um, I am participating in online events as I can, which compared to some of my teammates, um, is like half or maybe a little bit less than they do. But I'm placing well though, so ultimately, it's, uh, yeah, I place well. Um, it's it's been a while since I haven't placed in top eight. Um, yeah, it definitely, it has been. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's been a while since I haven't placed in top eight for everything I've done, which is a uh, really great to feel. It's it's funny because I mean, success is always, um, it's always kind of moving forward. So even though like that's really cool, in my head, I'm like I should be placing in top three. I get of course, yeah, you always want to get better. Like ultimately, your goal should be top two, right? Like fighting in the championship every time should be like yeah. like yeah, your... my, my goal is top one, but sometimes well, yeah, yeah, you're there, exactly. sometimes you don't. Um, exactly. But yeah, it's it's been great visibility for the team. I've been able to help bring on some amazing players who um, are able to play more tournaments the, than I am, and uh, are also placing top one, top two, top eight. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, the Strive division of the team is doing really well, which is which is awesome, and they they totally deserve it because the the people who put this thing together are so great. And where um, do you see the future of uh, uh, fighting game, uh, competitive fighting games going? Like in the next couple of years, do you what what do you yeah. think is on the horizon? So, um, I think this month was pretty big for fighting games. We got a, we got a lot of really cool announcements. Um, the biggest one is Project L, which is uh, created by the Cannon Brothers, who are uh, helped create Evo and also helped create GGTO Netcode. So they've been around in the fighting game community for a very long time, and they've been working with Riot, the creators of League of Legends, mm -hmm. um, to create a League of Legends fighting game, which as of now is called Project L. And it's a tag fighting game, right? If I remember correctly, with two characters. They just, well, yeah, that's what we just found out yesterday. They announced that it's a tag fighting game, um, that it's going to have groundbreaking net code. Um, they, they spoke a little bit about their design, design philosophy. But what's going to be really impactful to the community with that game is that League of Legends is, when we talk about those big prize pots in that oh, huge yeah. community, that's, that's where it is. Yeah. So to bring a piece of that community into the fighting game community, which I discussed earlier, is known for being small, not big pop bonuses, very grassroots, is going to be a big shift. You know for what sure. I mean? Um, for for better, for the most part, I think actually think for better for almost all of it. But um, as far as how it affects kind of the culture of you know old heads in the the FGC, it's going to be interesting to see for, for sure. sure. Um, it's also going to be interesting to see a lot of uh, the mobile community come to the FGC because yeah. I don't imagine outside of gaming there's a whole lot in common. It's very different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For um, sure. But I think growth is always good. Bigger prize pots are good. Uh, sponsorship opportunities will be there. So I imagine a lot of growth. Um, other than that, I think that we we just got a new console generation, which is pretty cool. PS5 and the Series X, and we just. Uh, uh, there may have been one thing that came up before it, but uh, I think Guilty Gear Strive was the first uh, fighting game to come out on the next-gen consoles. Mm -hmm. And we have a few more right around the corner. We have uh, King of Fighters coming out in February. I'm, I'm, I'm getting that, by the way. It's going to be my first one I played. I really wanted to Are get you? into 13 back in the day, and I never got to play it, so I'm yeah. going to be getting this one, giving it a try. I, I didn't know if you were into it. They just uh, had an open beta all weekend that just ended today. Um, I didn't even have a chance to play it, unfortunately. I've never but, played um, any of them. That's what I'm saying. I wanted to play 13 back when 9 was out. Um, yeah, yeah. 9 was out. 
and I never got to. Um, so I figured the next King of Fighters that came out, I'd give it a shot. So I'll probably play the next one. Yep, I'll, I'll be I'll be there with you playing it too. Um, even though I didn't get a chance to play the beta, I heard everybody was having a great time. Um, that's that's good news. <laughs> good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, something that I'm kind of excited about is there was a game that wasn't announced, but also followed up with yesterday called DNF Duel, which is a uh, a fighting game out of Japan called Dungeon Fighter is getting a new release. But what's exciting about it is it's being created by Arc System Works, the team that did Guilty Gear, and, and it's in and collaboration. And Fighter Z, right? Yep, and it's in collaboration with 18. Um, and 18, the last thing that they co-developed was one of my favorite fighting games of all time, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Oh. So I'm very excited for this. Um, I don't know when it'll launch. Project L, we probably won't even be able to play like a beta version of Project L until like 2023. It's a long ways out. Um, oh, it's, think, that, it's that far out. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's, it's a long way out. Well, because, I mean, they did say that they had, like, a whole system, right? They had League, and then they were doing Valorant, and then they did... So they're basically having, like, a League of Legends-based game in, like, almost every genre. They have a shooter now, they have the mobile, right. they have this. I don't know what would be left, a platformer? Maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, they have a TV show I now think... on Netflix, which I'm heard. I'm I hear it's great. good. I'm told it's great, yeah. I'm hearing I want... everyone's like, it's great. Yeah, I've seen the I'm first like, really? 10 minutes of the first episode. So far, it's it's good. The art style's great, yeah. too. It's, it's the League of Legends art style. Like, if you've seen CG cutscenes from the game, they made it look like that, which is really cool. Because it was always a beautiful art style, so. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, it's it's not really up my alley of something I'd be interested in, but I've been seeing reviews like 10 out of 10s. You got to see this. Such and such. The League so like, folklore right. is actually really good, though. Like, it's something you might yeah. like, because essentially you like fantasy and stuff, and essentially yeah. it's a fantasy world. So, and yeah, some yeah. of the stuff goes really deep, and a lot of the heroes all there's they're all connected in stories like and apparently if you play the game some of them have specific histories with each other things like that like like i know when i uh, i played more dota but i know there was always an item you could build called like blade it was called like blade of the ruined king and now yeah. years later a character just called out called uh, he's he's the ruined king like you actually get to, oh really so That's yeah cool. yeah and it's really cool like like he's like resurrected and his cutscene intro is freaking awesome. Like it's terrifying. <laughs> well, maybe maybe I'll start that tonight. Actually, while I'm eating yeah, dinner. Yeah, I've heard it's very good. So that that's where I see like uh, I think STG will continue to grow. I think they'll continue to provide awesome opportunities for their roster. Um, I think that the fighting game community will continue to expand them. For me, um, I am going to. I don't know if I'll stick to it because I got to see if I like it. But I'm going to begin the process of figuring out uh, if I want to do content creation and streaming to. Mm -hmm. Um, continue down that road and see if I want to commit a couple hours sure. to it a day or a few hours a week, see how it works for me. Well, like I said, um, if you need help, let me know. I'm a tiny streamer, but I can still help make you assets and stuff if you want. So Thank you. Or, thank or, you. or if you want stuff that looks even more professional than mine, I can link you to some people on Fiverr who Sweet. only charge you only charge you like 50 bucks and they'll do like your whole thing and help and you can help them design an, you know, an avatar and everything. So like they're really cool stuff. So Tight. Yeah, that, and that, that'll probably be the road I go on. Um, and then from there, yeah, just uh, seeing how far I can take this thing. Fortunately, uh, unlike sure as you were mentioning, like my reactions are getting slow. Reactions do get slower as you get older, but fighting they games, do. like I've always said that people use reactions as an excuse more so than it actually matters. You know what I mean? I'm like, what matters is spacing and understanding like what options the other person. Can well, in shooters, stuff. it definitely does. Like if you can't whip oh, to their yeah. head faster, oh, if you yeah. don't, basically against a good player. Whoever gets the first shot should win if they don't fuck up, if that makes sense. Or, or right. unless they, they have, like in Halo, you can pick up equipment that gives you like a thrust or something. Maybe you could thrust to the left and make a missed shot. But, you know, barring that kind of stuff, like whoever gets the first shot should win unless you do right. something really clever in your strafe and make a miss, which is why it's always sick if someone does that. And now there's actually a metal called reversal when someone gets the first shot and you turn around and five shot them and you out oh, really? from it. It's actually a reversal. It's a metal that appears. So like, and the cool thing is uh, uh, it's hard to get the perfect, which is perfect four shot. Most of the time it's a five shot. So if you get a perfect four shot, it'll be like, it'll be like reversal. Perfect. And you get two medals right after and over. That it's really sick. cool. That's it's really cool. sick. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. And infinite. that is cool. It's dope. Um, I, I got one the other day, and I was like, -hoo -hoo. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like a guy. I like, like I got like a, a six snipe, and then like uh, I, I, uh, I, I got, and then oh, that's what it was. The guy started shooting. He got the first shot. I went to shoot him, and it went click, and I was out of ammo. I was like, oh, so I switched to my BR, and I just started strafing and crouching, and then I got a perfect yeah. four, and he missed two shots because the way I was crouching was like reversal, perfect. It was like the coolest devil ever. I was like, ah, nice. that's so sick. It was so cool. Nice. I'm excited for. Uh, what's funny is. I've never been super into the competitive Halo scene, but I am waiting for whatever season they release Forge and Campaign Co-op. Oh, because dude, for sure. 
when they were like, uh, you know, we have uh, this open world version of Halo, I'm like, that sounds awesome. I can't wait to play that with my friends. And they were like, hold up there. <laughs> <laughs> hold up. They're like, you can play we're, we're gonna we're gonna have these things because it takes time or, or exactly. whatever. <laughs> exactly. We're working on it. So, but uh, here's but here's the multiplayer, which they did on the 20th anniversary, which was awesome. It was the 20th was anniversary awesome. of Xbox and Halo, and they surprised yeah. everybody by just being like, "Oh, by the way, here's the multiplayer. You can download it now." I mean, that's so cool. That's that's, amazing, that's the coolest thing they've ever done. And and for being a very good beta, it's got such good reviews because it's great. Like most betas yeah. have issues. It has some issues with like the UI and like the friends list stuff, but the game itself functions it's really great. well. Like it's, it's so really fun. great. Yeah, it's, it's so, really and good. the maps are good too. I like the maps have, a lot. Have you played it some? Yeah, yeah, I've been playing it. I probably played it like since it launched a total of like two, two and a half hours. Dude, it's crossplay. I can play with you from PC. You should, you should message me. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's crossplay. Yeah. I will. Yeah, um, we should, bro. And I also but, have a secondary account, so if you want to play some ranked, I can do that with you too. I'm down for whatever. So okay. I'll play the second uh, one. As long as you don't pull me into ranked and I'm playing all the uh, all the. That's what. People, that's why I'll I said I have a second. Time. The second account hasn't been. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been matched yet. Yeah, and the first one, I'm I'm literally like three games away from onyx which is the highest rank and that was and also that's going in solo so i'm doing pretty good so. oh shoot okay well i'll tell you what if i get on tonight i'm gonna hit you with a text message or even if i next time i'm on halo i'm gonna hit you with a text message for sure brother yeah yeah, yeah. Um, um yeah for, for for me basically when it comes to halo infinite i imagine hts is going to do their thing it's going to be the full league there's going to be the online qualifiers there's going to be the actual events so far i think i saw raleigh on there in anaheim i imagine there's probably at least five or six other cities there's going to be a championship like they always do uh but the cool thing is that seems like it's a corroboration with the devs and hts so it's it's already a big thing kind of like what you're talking about with um with league you know they already have that so i'm sure there's going to be good money because there was very good money in halo 5 as well um but yeah. what i but what i think is great about this game is it's it's a mixture of everything that everyone liked about the old games that they wished they hadn't gotten rid of with a few of the things from the new games that people really liked too just in a yeah. different way so it's kind of a mixture i think this game's going to bring in a lot more people because the the people that like the older games better and the people that like the newer games kind of get everything they want if that makes sense right. in one game yeah um, and I think what's great about that is like, we're already seeing it. There's there, there, a we, like I, I'm there, but they already have like, uh, over 400 teams in that first event. And that's just the beginning. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, and I don't know if you know, but there was the HGS online qualifier was this past weekend. Like I was watching it and, uh, optic for those of you who know i got your pistola he's on a team with apg if you're a gangsta and like two other people and they matched up against um cloud nine for the championships and cloud nine was undefeated and they reset the bracket and optic won for those of you that know nice. pistola pistola the wizard they called him still on top years later one of the greatest halo 2 play hail players since halo 2 still killing it he's probably yeah. i don't know 30 now or something i have no idea but like yeah. uh yeah and he's still just as funny as ever but it's so cool to see like the new bloods from like Halo like five teaming up with some of the OGs now. It's like these mixed teams. And yeah. you know, it's it's really cool. Uh, it, it's it's so awesome. And uh, the one thing I hope though is that HGS is like the main league, but I hope a lot of independent leagues, you know, do their tournaments too along the side. Cause now you have like face it and smash.gg and these websites. So people can host like huge tournaments if you get big sponsors and stuff. So there's I, I feel like unless they don't allow it i have no idea like it would be really cool if there's like third party tournaments that are big too because like you know it yeah. seems like a lot of these games have like the main circuit but then there's usually lots of other side circuits too um so something like this i mean it's the first year but i'm hoping in the future there's hcs but then there's other opportunities as well for other gamers to like make a name for themselves and win some money and grow big you know to make it to these events too and it just becomes like you know, a thing where the, the players can kind of rotate between circuits and just, you know, keep keep it going. I think that would be really, really great for Halo, personally. That That's what I'm hoping for. So, yeah, and not just not just because I want to play, but also because even if I'm not playing, I, I want to have more weekends of, uh, of tournament watching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing, sure. nothing selfish about it or anything. Um, um, and not only that, um, you know, I never want to see any of these big games fail. But when they do, uh, Halo is in a pretty good spot because the the release of the new Call of Duty and the new Battlefield have not been positive, and everybody's no. loving Halo, right? Now. Yeah, one hundred percent. And honestly, yeah. I've, I mean, this is just my opinion. I'm saying this on stream. I, I've lost interest in Call of Duty a long time ago because essentially it feels like they released the same game with a new skin, and to mm -hmm. me, the campaign's just another skin too. They're like really simple, nothing interesting. It's the yeah. same game. They're charging, and and it'd be different if they charged you like thirty bucks, but they charge you. Six 60 bucks for uh, the same game really with with just 
new skins, and, you know, and, and I'm not cool yeah. with that. And they, and they and I get it. That makes tons of money, but it makes so much money. They basically have what three companies like uh, Treyarch, yep. Infinity, Sledgehammer, and they're uh, they each put out a new game every year. They're just taking. It just seems like they're just taking your money. That's why I appreciated the new Modern Warfare because for the first time in years, it looked yeah. like they actually revamped the engine. They actually it actually looked like a modern game for once. You know what and I mean? They did. Like, that game was a blast. I don't even yeah, and it was actually years. good. It was, it was good. Yeah, it was yeah. good. And the campaign was actually good. I watched someone play through it all. It was great. Yeah. Like it was actually yeah. good. And see, that's the thing. If they put out a game every three years or something, you could make all of your games good like that. But the, the objective yeah. is just quantity, right? Get it out there. So, Get it out there. So, you know, and, and I think that's good for something like Halo because they ultimately took longer, but this game feels original and it feels like it has a lot of the stuff that you want. And I think that's great, you know? So, yeah, I yeah totally I'm happy. Agree. As am I, my friend. <sighs> Well, I, I actually, I never thought we'd do a video, uh, a podcast on the world of competitive gaming. I know it's called Cinescutching, guys, but we do have a lot of interest, and we said we talk gaming, and this relates to gaming. So, yeah. 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 And who Not knows? Over lot. time, we might start doing other talks, too. It's, it's always possible, so. Yeah, I'm sure. Eventually, uh, you run out of movies. No, nah, not that you <laughs> run out of movies. But uh, no, I don't mean that. Uh, I don't mean that literally. But you're right. We've been talking about, uh, we brought up gaming a lot during a lot of, uh, a lot of kind of our storytelling episodes. Yeah. Um, but there's a whole other piece that we wanted to deep dive today, and I, I really enjoyed it, and I'm pretty sure you really enjoyed it too. Oh, uh, yeah, for so sure. Who knows? We'll probably I, do it again in the future. For sure. Because I feel like every time we've touched on game, it's been like a, a very minor part of the podcast. And, yeah. And, 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 and we do list the podcast as like film, television, and gaming, you know? So, I, and yep. this is something that I know that we're both passionate about, and him doing his awesome things with STG, and now now Halo Infinite coming about coming out with what I'm, which is something I'm passionate about and I'm starting to get into, I don't know about competitively, but I'm starting to get that itch again. It seemed like a really mm -hmm. cool subject to cover because I feel like uh, a lot of people who are watching this might not know as much about competitive gaming. So hopefully there's like a little crash course. And uh, if you're interested, you could always look into it yourself. Twitch.tv has tournaments all the time. Uh, Twitch Rivals has tournaments in tons of different games that are almost every weekend now. So like, um, you know, yep. if you find a game you like, you'd be surprised how fun it is to watch these players play at a level that you didn't think was imaginable. So I totally recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun deep dive. <laughs> no doubt. Well, everybody, thank you for joining us again for episode 12. We can't wait till uh, the following Tuesday where we get to come together again. And in the meantime, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Wonderful. I hope you guys have a great turkey, ham, all the good stuff. If you're vegetarian or vegan, all the vegan op options, the chicken you know the 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 the, the, ter the tofu the tofurkey everything i hope everyone's happy and, and dylan's shaking his head right now why are you shaking your head <laughs> i hope they're not happy <laughs> <laughs> hey i'm going to enjoy my ham and candy dms and macaroni and cheese <laughs> so i uh, i'm going to let them do whatever I they want did. to be happy i'm going to be happy in my home with a big old pig <laughs> so I, I hope you are happy. I just hope that, you know, it has flavor too. <laughs> That's what I hope. I hope that you don't have to worry me. about that in my household. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, brother. I hope you have a good Thanksgiving too, because I probably, I don't know if I'll talk to you before then, but I'll probably yeah. send you a text on that day or call you or something too. Yeah, for sure. Same to you, Mark. All right, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, if you don't celebrate, I hope you just have a great four-day weekend. Uh, we will see you next time on Cinescussion. See ya. Laters. <laughs>